Joining me on my panel to discuss this is Green Senator Larissa Waters and National Senator here with me in the studio, Bridget McKenzie. Bridget McKenzie, first to you. There is a need for secrecy, which I think a lot of people understand, but I think on the flip side, a lot of people would be uncomfortable with what we are hearing about out of this inquiry today. Would you agree? Well, I think it's paramount on all of us to ensure that children uh, in our care are protected. And I know the government takes that very, very seriously. But the reality is that uh, 2,000 children under the previous government in July last year were in detention. And so if we can actually go about uh, implementing our policies of stopping the votes, that is less children that will be in detention and less children that um, will be experiencing these issues. We've seen a 35% decrease in the number of children in detention as a result of our government's policy and that's got to be a good thing. Larissa Waters, what's your response to this inquiry today? Of course, the situation has improved in the last year. It's still not great, but there are improvements. Look, I think any amount of children in detention is a national shame. And the notion that you need to be detaining children at all because they might be some kind of security risk is just ridiculous. They're children. Uh, we don't support locking up kids uh, or anyone seeking asylum for that matter. We want a short period in which those claims can be processed and then release those people into the community where they want to become contributing members of our society uh, and where they can lead a safe life. I just want to move on to some other areas as well. We've um, seen uh, today a proposal from Twiggy Forest, which is quite radical in some areas. Bridget McKenzie, what do you think about this proposal, about, uh, I guess, expanding the basics card, really? Well, I haven't seen the report. I've, mm. I've read the article uh, that refers to the report, and I think the report's being released. It's sitting with uh, government at the moment. Mm. But it does go to the heart of income management, and it, currently we have 24,000 Australians on income management. It's a um, voluntary system mm. additionally. Uh, Australians, any Australian can actually uh, be part of the scheme and we've, we see Would it as a really positive. It, well, the government uh, has already committed $100 million to expand the program to Sejuna for 12 months yep. in South Australia because at the end of the day this is about outcomes and ensuring that particularly women and children uh, in vulnerable families uh, can actually ensure that there is food on the table going forward and that they can actually ensure their kids have shoes to go with school and the basic requirements and I think that's a fabulous outcome. And Larissa Waters, what do you think about extending this, not only to other areas, but extending it to um, areas in which this money uh, can be used? I think uh, Twiggy Forrest was suggesting in, in part that perhaps there isn't any disposable income. Is that something you would be open to? Oh, look, absolutely not. I think this proposal is verging on farcical. The notion that you can somehow empower people to manage their finances by taking away their control of their finances, mm. it's just silly. Uh, and I hope the government rejects Andrew Forrest's uh, report. Uh, extending out income management, which hasn't worked so far, to apply to almost anyone on a welfare payment is simply going to entrench and disempower people. It's not going to uh, give people the financial tools to manage their finances properly. It's going to disempower them and, uh, and I hope that this silly proposal is just rejected outright. I want to quickly look at the mining tax. This is something, of course, uh, Larissa Waters, the um, government wa does want to repeal, along with uh, a lot of the spending measures. Now, the, the mining tax hasn't worked. I know a, a profits-based tax is something that the Greens did want, but they wanted uh, vastly expanded. But whilst we're in this style, mate, we shouldn't be spending on programs that aren't actually paid for, should we? Well, that's precisely why we've suggested improving the mining tax so that it can actually start raising significant revenue rather than simply scrapping it all together as the government wants to do and is facing significant resistance from the Greens and others in the Senate who actually think that um, not only should we be raising revenue but that important things like that low income super contribution, which will predominantly affect women, needs to be kept. So uh, again, I think it's a very strange approach to say, well, something's not working, let's get rid of it rather than let's fix it so that it can raise revenue. If we're in a budget crisis, surely the government should be open to revenue raising measures. Bridget McKenzie, your response? Well, I think it's a bit richer, the Greens, to um, 
come before us and, and seeking to make these sort of changes. They were basically in government uh, for three years. They could have sought to make those changes and use their numbers mm -hmm. uh, effectively within that partnership. They made other choices. We were really clear with what we were going to take to the Australian people and Senator Waters can say what she likes, but at the end of the day, the Australian people made it very clear mm. the thing that they wanted to get rid of the mining tax. And so when we look at um, some of the spending measures that are going to be um, impacted, for instance, the school kids bonus, we made it very clear that we were getting rid of that. Um, at the end of the day, the changes the Labor government made to that particular payment meant Basically, it's a lump of money going into people's bank account. There is no requirement for families to spend it on mm. things, educational issues. And I think that means we're basically just writing blank checks. And the savings that we need to get our budget back on track to address uh, the one billion dollars in interest we're paying every month that we can spend on effective measures out there in community can't be done while this is hanging around our neck. On another note, are you comfortable with a new coal mine being approved just this week in Queensland when talking about direct action, a lower carbon economy? Why was that necessary? Well, I come from the good state of Victoria where the state government there has done some fabulous work about ensuring environmental, best environmental management practice alongside scientific approvals and understanding before we make any decisions about uh, mining on our land in my home state. Larissa Waters, there were strict environmental, not just environmental, but strict conditions all round for this. Well, unfortunately, the um, Auditor General's report last month showed that those conditions simply are not enforced, and ev everybody knows that. And secondly, this particular company that have proposed and now been allowed to place the largest coal mine in the Southern Hemisphere um, in Queensland to ship out through the Great Barrier Reef, back in their home country of India, they've been sued for breaching similar environmental conditions. So they have a poor track record of compliance and we now know from that report that the federal government has a poor track record of enforcement. This is a recipe for destruction of groundwater, um, of the reef and of course of the climate. All right, Bridget McKenzie, I just quickly want to ask you about the Roads to Recovery mm. scheme. There's been uh, calls from local governments to unlock this funding and expired in June. And there's $2 billion that local governments can't get to. What's going on? Absolutely. Well, what's going on is more political games from the Greens and the Labor Party. I know. Um, Senator Mill made a big song and dance about the Greens being actually for regional Australia and this is the core program when I travel around rural and regional councils but you're in and government, local government so how, what's going this on? is what they want to actually happen and for the Greens to actually stand in the way and play political games just because Anthony Albanese wants to keep his political legacy what we're it arguing was a about small amendment, amendments wasn't it? well it was amendments about keeping the name of a program and add, adding on duplication, it, etc. Because what we're doing is actually ensuring that we're entrenching the politicisation of infrastructure and that's not something we're prepared to do. This is real money that needs to get on the ground very quickly. Bridget McKenzie, Larissa Waters, thanks so much for joining me on Lunchtime Agenda today. A quick break, we'll be back.